With the second pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels holds the keys to the Commanders' future. Daniels is going to walk it in for the touchdown. T. Command holds the keys to knowing how he played. In the big moment when you needed to make plays, he just consistently made plays. It's time for a Take Command Tape Tuesday. Jaden Daniels just lays it out there perfectly. What a throw. On the Hoffman Show. It's a funny game, Logan, when you can score 34 points for your quarterback at the start of the fourth quarter, and you still go back and watch the tape and go, oh, there's a little bit more left here. Yeah. They could have they could have scored 50. Like, and, and sometimes that's football, right? Like every play is designed to work. Oh, that if that had just been a little bit better, you, you can do that to an extent every week. I think what's interesting about this one is there's some stuff that he's done pretty frequently this year that he misses in this game. Uh, there's a couple missed reads. There's a couple missed throws. And yet, the thing that is so spectacular about him right now, and the thing that we talked about this on the instant reaction show and, and the tape kind of confirmed it when you can just make a couple of really key, big explosive plays, you can wipe away smaller mistakes and you don't have to be as efficient. You don't have to be as perfect as they've been the previous three games of the win streak. Now four at four and one, because you can make up for little, little misses with big gains. And I feel like that is the story of Jaden Daniels Sunday. Yeah, and I think that was kind of what the, the narrative was going to be. It was like, how do you find explosive plays with how Cleveland was going to pressure you? And I think the first explosive play to Terry is a great example of that. But there's also plays later on in the game. I think you got to give credit to Austin Eckler. You know, that explosive play is huge. And uh, But they all lead to points. They all lead to scoring opportunities. And Jaden Daniels, you know, making free runners miss and understanding when to scramble. And if you are going to play a lot of man coverage and we're going to pick it up and you're going to have your back to the back to the quarterback, he's going to hurt you. And I think that's the cool thing is that he was able to find explosive plays down the field. The, the, the one to Diami is also really exquisite. I mean, that's just such a tremendous throw. I mean, really just a fantastic throw. The scramble on, I think it was third and seven where he gets the first down. It's like a 34 yard gain. That it was, uh, without, I think that might've been a fourth down even. Maybe. Um, but it, there wasn't, it wasn't as consistent down to down, but he was still able to make enough plays to to make the offense right and elevate the offense, which was which is kind of the whole thing, right? Is is we knew that the completion percentage, we knew that the efficiency was going to regress at some point, and so the question then became, do, like, can you win when it's not perfect? And I think the thing is, is yeah, like you could, he's shown how explosive he can be, he can show how explosive and accurate he can be. I think my big question coming out of the game is the thing that we said on the post game show is, can you remain can you still do this in a game flow that's going to be a little bit more challenging versus a team like Baltimore, which is going to score a lot of points, which is going to put a lot of stress on you offensively and defensively, unlike Cleveland, which, again, they came with a really nice defensive plan that Jaden handled well, but um, they couldn't support it with any kind of offensive production, which which is not how you play football in the NFL. You mentioned how Owusu Koromoro looked gas going into the the, the, yeah. the second half of that game. They were on the field so much, playing so many snaps in so many different situations. They just didn't get any any support whatsoever from the offense. So that's the thing that I come back to is, again, <clears throat> I think this is a – we keep talking about steps and stages for Jaden Daniels. This is a really nice step and a really nice stage. But the intensity on that is going to get turned up when you play better offenses and a, and a defense that can complement it. So I think that's something that, again, we, we keep kind of shadowing or alluding to this um, Baltimore game, and that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, I, I, the thing that I have trust in in this offense right now is they seem to do everything well. Like, you just have to make a choice as a defensive coordinator of, like, what is it that I want to – what is it that I want to make them do, knowing that they can do it, but we hope they have a bad day. And obviously, they have run the the, the absolute mess out of the football um, with, with not only Jaden, but B-Rob has got a couple of 100-plus uh, yard games. Um, Eckler's been great. Like they, they will run the ball down your throat if you give them the numbers to do so. So it's like, okay, well, let's let Jaden beat us from the pocket because we certainly don't want him to scramble. But he's shown the ability to do that. And there's, you know, if you're going to dedicate uh, an extra – uh, player down in the box to run like he will pick his matchups and I think you know he's shown a really good understanding of of where that like the Diami play is very simple right he's got one-on-ones he knows it but he's like this Emerson cat has uh not had a good year defensively for Cleveland and I think Diami can win here and even though Diami hasn't had a lot as many of the explosive plays throughout his career as I think a lot of people thought he would when he got drafted like 
he's still Deami Brown. He, he's still really, really fast. Yeah. And he trusted Deami to win, and and he did. And you you have a, a big explosive play. So I think that's the interesting thing going against Baltimore is like, and any other you know good team they place this season is like, okay, they're probably going to do what, frankly, Cincinnati tried to do to Baltimore uh, last week with Lamar of like, can you beat us from the pocket? And in in many ways, Jaden's game against uh, against Cleveland was similar to Lamar's game against Cincinnati, where it wasn't the most efficient. But like Jaden completed was it fifteen of twenty four or something like that? Yeah. He had two thirty eight. Like that's not a slouch a day of, of passing production. So he found the big plays to make the most out of the completions. And even though there's definitely some where there there's some plays left on the field, some opportunities missed. Um, you know the red zone. Uh, you know obviously was not great that the pick. Uh, and he he has a, a kind of a funky throw on the the play before it. Like it could have been even worse, uh, even worse for Cleveland, even better for Washington statistically, and even better for Jaden statistically with like one or two more key completions. Like that, that is the st- the floor underneath him, which is tremendous. Like I don't I hope people hear all that and like, dang, that sounds really negative. No, that's actually exciting. It's like he wasn't this like crazy historically efficient 80% completion guy. And he was still this productive and he was still this good. That's tremendously exciting because the step that he's in right now is he's finding different ways to win games. And that's ultimately the job. Yeah. And, uh, and each week we want to look for some type of growth. And I think that's the thing I just alluded to prior to that is it wasn't the cleanest. It wasn't the most effective. Um, I, again, I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm so excited for this team and this organization. Like he has all the signs and kind of makings of like what everyone's been looking for here for a long time. Um, but I do think that this team <clears throat> is somewhat imperfect. And I think this offense is still somewhat imperfect from a personnel and talent standpoint, even though they've been playing so well. So that's where, again, like in this game, I was actually hoping that Cleveland could put a little bit of pressure on them offensively. Like, let's say they go three and out and Cleveland goes down and scores. Does that change how Cliff calls a game? Does that change any of the dynamics in the offense? Do we lose some of that kind of running ground and pound that's made this team so successful? Is that less in the game plan? Is it more on Jaden? How does he handle more responsibility? So I think that's the thing, again, that I come back to. It's like, yeah, was this performance excellent? Absolutely, it was excellent. But I think he was really, when we talked about this a little bit at the top, but he was really supported by the defense. And the defense was able to, at every turn, give him the support that he needed. So three and out, it's okay. We'll get that. We'll get the turnover back for you. Oh, they're backed up. We'll get to the ball back for you with good field position. Oh, okay, you're backed up. We punted. It's okay. No points here for Cleveland. And they just were able to constantly do that because of, uh, A, how effectively the defensive game plan was, but also some of Cleveland's ineptitude. So it's it's great to see the explosive plays. It's great to see the production. It's great to see the composure, all those things we've seen. But what happens when it is all on him? And that's the thing that um, right. I think I think is like the next step. And we talked about steps. And I think he answered a step here for sure. But just, just so fans understand, like this, the volume on this can get turned up really, really quick if the offense of the other team is really good. And if you think about it, we've played – Imperfect offense. I mean, Cleveland, the the Cincinnati Bengals is a great example of a really good offense that can execute at a super high level, especially when Joe Burrow is playing the way he did. And I think Jaden met that challenge there. However, yeah, I was going to say Cincinnati was the was the the best one, but also their defense has been horrendous. Right, and so you know Baltimore is a different animal. But again, like so, all these things are really good, and he took a step. But next week it's going to be a new step, and how's he going to handle that adversity? And how's he going to handle that moment? And I think those are the things that are really exciting about him is that despite the adversity, despite the situation, despite the imperfectness of this last game, imperfect in air quotes there, because I think it's still a pretty gosh darn good game. He right. seems to meet the occasion. So to me, it's like, where is the, where's the, where's the line? Like, where is he in his final iteration? Like, where do we see him struggle or stumble? And we haven't really seen it yet. I mean, I know you kind of were alluding to the fact that this maybe was a stumble, but to find the explosive plays the way he did to, to work and elevate the offense the way he did in certain moments, I think speaks to the kind of talent that he has. And it just, I want to see where the, where, where the ceiling stops, basically, where is that right. ceiling? And I think that's the yeah. thing is in some ways I'm disappointed because Cleveland didn't challenge him in that way. And we didn't get, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. that's kind of how Browns, I, you didn't leaving. hold up your end of the bargain. Although you were exactly who we thought you'd be. Cause you're terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah. And just, just to, just to clarify, like I, 
I wouldn't say that it's a stumble. It's he found a different way to yeah, be excellent, yeah, yeah. right? I didn't. Like, I don't it mean to misquote you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's it's a good. It's I'm glad you said it though because it's a good point of clarification, right? It's not that he stumbled. It's that he did it. He found success differently. But I'd also say this to, in counter to your point, like if the bar for him to potentially struggle, where we're like, oh god, can he do it against that team? Is Baltimore like? There ain't five teams that are better right. than Baltimore. And so, like, look at the rest of the schedule. Carolina, no. The Chicago Bears, that's an interesting one, especially sure. if Caleb gets rolling because their defense has given up uh, 21 points or less in 10 of their last 11 games going back to last season. The Giants, again. The Steelers, who offensively cannot keep up, even if their defense is great. Uh, the Eagles, we'll see where they are by mid-November. The Cowboys, okay, but their defense isn't that good um right. they're, they're maybe starting to find some things tennessee no new orleans no philly again atlanta they've been all over the place who knows what they are by december 29th and then dallas like that's it that's the season baltimore's easily maybe not easily but baltimore's definitively the best team you're going to play and so even if he does struggle and it's like okay wow that was a learning experience if they were to play baltimore again you know they obviously can't play them in the playoffs but a baltimore caliber team again in the playoffs they make it they take this easier schedule and all of a sudden you're in the playoffs facing one of those teams. I have full confidence the way that Jaden's learning curve has been that he'll be better the second time around against that caliber of team. And like, that's kind of the the crazy thing with him is like, okay, maybe he will make a mistake, but he's not gonna make the same mistake twice. And we've seen that in games. We've seen that almost in drives sometimes. And so game over game, week over week, month over month, I do have confidence that he will find it because I, I just think he is that caliber of player already. Not that it's going to be smooth forever. Not that he's never going to have off weeks. And we should, you know, remember that he's human in that level. But I do, th I, like, I don't, I don't think the train's going to come off the, the tracks and crash in any meaningful way, even if it hits a bump in the road and they have to reset uh, on, on one week at some point in the season. Yeah, no, I, I, <clears throat> I see it exactly the same way. I see it exactly the same way, um, which is exciting. It's, I, I, you know, when the season started, I never, in my wildest dreams, you know, despite how high I was on Jaden, despite my love and respect for you know Adam Peters and Dan Quinn and what they've been able to do over the course of their careers like I never anticipated this kind of turnaround and it's been really fantastic to see kind of at every level and it's not and again it's not one thing which is the great thing about it which we talked about when we kind of reviewed that drive it's everybody's supporting every Jaden's making plays the 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 effort and attitude of the team is improved the coaching's much better and it all of a sudden it just shows you i think kind of some of the things we were kind of maligned we were much maligned about last year with regards to the staff and regards to the talent on the roster you just see how that all elevates when the situation's right and uh and it gives me a lot of hope and optimism that this thing could be kind of what you're talking about the schedule outside of baltimore isn't that crazy i mean new orleans has done some good stuff and philly is always very very talented it's in a, it's a division game i'm not saying they're going to win out or anything like that but all of a sudden there's life here. And I think you see that when you talk to the players and when you hear the players talk about Jaden, it's like, man, he's, he just has it. He's the guy. There's, there's something about him and there's something really fantastic. You know, thinking back to 2012 for me about when you have that confidence in that position and when you have that hope and optimism and everyone's working hard because there is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not just a dark cavern you're running full speed into. It's like, man, if we hit this the right way, we could do something really, really special here. And I think um, you see that this game is a great data point for that because of how 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 Cleveland played them defensively, which we've talked about at nauseum so far. But the fact we had to win it a different way and we could is is special. One thing that I did want to talk about with him, um, just a sequence that I, I'm looking to get a little more understanding on is the red zone sequence where he ultimately throws the pick. Yeah. So they have the big play to Terry. Uh, obviously, they get down there. I think they run the ball on first down. And there's two throws that I'm like, what? What's going on here? Um, and, and I guess I'm curious in part from the Cliff side of it and part from the Jaden side of it as they get down there and they're trying to punch it in because obviously red zone execution is huge. Austin Seibert thankfully has been money this year. So uh, they're able to get the field goal, but, uh, or they would be able to get the field goal if they can just, uh, you know, not throw an interception down there. Um, but what, what I, I'll, I'll phrase it this way. Uh, Cause I, I want to try to be positive with this uh, because Jaden deserves that based off how he's played. What can he learn from that slash? What is he going to do next time when he inevitably throws a touchdown? Uh, yeah, what can you learn from it? So let's start with the first one is Zach Ertz. And they're running basically like what I would call like a pick mesh. So basically you have two guys on the offensive left. They run across. It's man coverage. They try to pick the guy for Zach. I think it gets a little – the timing gets a little bit off, which I think is, again, where 
so probably something most people don't see is Zach's a little bit behind it. So what I mean is like you probably want Zach on this clip um, to be over like the tackle when Jaden's getting ready to throw as he's going to clear that backside hook defender. So basically like there's a guy in the middle of the field. He's the plug player. I think it's a Wusu Koromo. They run this pick and Zach gets a little bit bogged down. He doesn't clear the hook player the way you'd want him to. You want him sprinting by that guy and you want Jaden to see that. So he can just lead that nice out in front and get the ball there. But Zach's a little bit high. He's a little bit late. He's kind of stacked over the hook player. So the throw becomes a little bit unclear to me and i'm sure yeah. they've, i've seen them rep that in practice and training camp and it's 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 he's Jaden's excellent at it like that guy clears it's like boom bang balls right there that coupled with a little bit of pressure on the edge i feel like he gets in these moments sometimes where he doesn't set his feet like he's at his best like every quarterback when he sets his feet and Jaden's superpowers that he can get to that base kind of whenever he wants to um but he doesn't do it here and he kind of kind of steps away from it balls a little bit high and sails out of the back of the end zone or whatever it does. But I think so it's a couple things. One, it's the execution on the play. It could be a little bit crisper. And that happens. That This is the stuff that happens. And we've seen him elevate plays off schedule and do some things. Didn't get right. it done here. So to me, it's the timing. To me, it's his footwork. And what I would say if I'm Cliff, I'm just say, hey, you know that he's coming open. Like you see Zach running through here. Just you're going to have to take a hit for the touchdown. Take a hit. Deliver a strike. Throw it. Throw it to grass. It's man coverage. There's nobody there. So if you miss the throw, throwing the grass, I can live with that. Don't give him a, give him a shot. Basically, is what I would yeah. say. I almost feel like he did. He threw the grass. Just the grass was way too far ahead of Zach. And, and it's like if you could if you could lo not not loft it, but like you put a little bit more touch on that ball, let Zach run under it. Yeah. Um. He just kind of fires a fastball to the spot, and it almost felt like a timing route that was clearly not a timing route. It's it's one you have to see because you have to see him clear. You have to you know. It's a kind of like a mesh concept, I guess. Is yeah, you kind of have to, running. like, the best way I can explain it is you have to feel his speed, I would say, yeah. after watching this a lot, like, over the course of my career. You have to feel his speed enough to know he's going to clear that guy in the timing. And so I'm not sure you feel that from him. It, it, and so there is another variation of that where you run the cross, and if the hook player is widening, you take it high. And so, again, I kind of wonder if they weren't, necessarily on the same page because it oh, is bogged down he yeah. didn't run because it does back. look like he throws it higher yeah yeah and so again all of that starts to me at the beginning of that play where it gets a little bit muddy it's like there it's a little bit bogged down the timing's not exactly right he's not set he doesn't trust it and if i'm if i'm cliff honestly i'm like if you didn't love it i'm okay with it i'm right. okay with you throwing that away because 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 if we what, what's what i'm looking for if we throw a pick here or if we do something bad here, obviously we lose points. So right. if you don't absolutely love it, I'm okay with that. Throw it away. So yeah. that's that's how I would coach it if I was in the room with him. But um, so to me, it's not that's it's a tough throw. It's a tough look. It looks like a bad miss. But I think it's more on some of the other elements of the play. Yeah, and again, he was taking pressure late in that down as well. So um, he's kind of fading back, and, and you kind of understand it. The next one's the one where it's like, okay, what's the what's the coaching point here? Third and third and goal from the five, uh, and this is where the pick happens. Yeah, so this is – I forget what we used to call this with Kyle, but it's like, it essentially plays like a spot route. So you get a corner. The tight end kind of works a widened release and then sits in between the two hook players. The back runs hard to the flat, hopefully pulling out that kind of – I think it's the corner pulling them wide to make a window yep. for the tight end. And so really this play is like – it's like a post-up play in basketball. You want that guy to run, the tight end to run, turn around right in the end zone, and the ball is on him. So you're throwing with a lot of anticipation, a lot of ball velocity. And this is one where I think Jaden just didn't read it out. He kind of predetermined that he was going to throw the ball to Zach because that's where the ball should go. And I think when you look at the coverage, you say to yourself, well, there is a soft spot there. But Owusu Kuromoa with the back running to the flat, and again, this is part of the play design, is sprinting that way. And Owusu Kuromoa, to his credit, does a really good job of closing that window. And I think back to the Arizona game, and there was a couple times where the linebacker is pushing to that spot, and Jaden, because of his quick release, is able to get the ball out so fast and so on time and squeeze it in the window. Owusu Kuromoa is a better football player. He anticipates it better. His coverage instincts were better. He's able to close the window. So if you're looking at it holistically, you'd say that's not there. And usually, and you, are you looking at the play right now, Craig? Do you have I one? Am. You? I am. Is there yeah. someone running across the formation toward the window? Terry is wide open on a yep. slant on the backside of this. 
So, um, and that, that would be my question, right? So this, this bunch that they have is on the boundary side. Yeah. Uh, and they have a two-man concept to the field. Um, so on the the offensive left, so the ball's on the right hash. Uh, the boundary is the shorter side of the field. For those that have heard that term, you might not know it. The field is the open side of the field. So the ball's on the right hash. They motion, or I guess it's a, it's kind of a tighter split with Ertz and I think it's Zacchaeus down there. Um, yeah. And then B-Rob is, is the back to the right and going into the flat. And on the field side of this, on the back side, they have some wider splits. Terry's on the outside. Uh, I think it's Luke uh, is going to run kind of a, a corner, and he runs fantastic interference. By the way, that is something Luke McCaffrey is incredible at. He, he is he so good at running interference without picking up offensive pass interference. Yeah. Like, that is a skill. Yeah, he, and, does uh, he, he does that, and Terry is wide open. And they're in part because the linebackers have gone to that three-receiver side and, and have kind of pushed that way now in part because Jaden opens to that side. But I still think there's so much space that if I'm cl- like my question to you, actually, that I wanted to, to get to you in this film review was like, did he read the wrong side of the field here? Not that he didn't throw with anticipation to the spot and the right concept if he's going to throw this. But because that's so muddy and because there's just not a lot of space there, should he have just been reading the field side anyway? And Terry is wide open on a slant on the backside of this. Yeah, no, I don't know if he read the wrong side here, but I do think once that, once, so what you want to do on this is like once that hook player, once the Usu Kromo plays hard underneath, you got to know that they're pushing this way. They're pushing with your vision. Right. So you want to kind of think about replacing the zone. The thing about the, this concept here that it's drawn up is it's like, it's a one half of the field and the other half of the field. Sometimes they'll run like a crossing pattern over top where it's like, if that's dead, you just rip it, rip it right back to like a shallow cross. Terry's on a slant here. And I don't know, I probably would have worked just looking at the how the field's distributed here with the plug player in the middle of the field. I probably would have worked the slant, but it's his prerogative here. And I think what he, I don't know if he thinks this is man. It looks like man and they kind of zone it. They like match it off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In a way that I don't think yeah. he's expecting. Because like, I, I think if you start, start at the start of the snap, you get three guys on the line, right? And so it right. looks like, hey, we're, you know, a guy's on Zacchaeus, a guy's on Zach, a guy's on the back. So the guy in the back really should push through this window. Um, uh, what's his name? Not um, oh, Usukur Usukur should push through to the back, right? At right. least but that's what I would anticipate. Off. But instead yeah. they pass it off. And so they get like a match concept. So I understand why he does this and I understand why he's thinking this way. However, once you realize that guy's not matching the back and they're passing it off, you can't you can't throw it. You might it, you just throw it out the back of the end zone. You can maybe hit the corner in the back, but like you can't. It's not designed in a way, in my opinion, where it's like I work here to there. It's they're two right. separate concepts. You pick them pre snap, and I feel like they just kind of got them because of how they um, because of how Osu Koromo played it. Quite honestly, right, and potentially like. In fairness to Jaden, right? If you're told all week long, hey, in the red zone, they're going to play man. They're going to man this. Like, we've got him. If you get this is the look. Like, you would imagine that's probably the conversation. And Schwartz deserves credit for mixing it up and making it, you know, the, the players on the Browns, like, credit to them for making it look like man and, and kind of getting him here. So, um, and also, I, like, I, just looking at that, like, I think he probably should have, like, once that's dead, the way that yeah. the corner played it, I think you want to try to throw the corner. And that's the read, right? It's the right. spot concept to the corner. And so, once it gets muddy, my eyes should flick up and I can put that ball right to the back of the end zone. And uh, right. the, I think I think he just kind of was like, it's man, I know it's man, which we've seen him do before, which we've seen him because he studies so much, he prepares so hard. He's like, I know the coverage. This is how they're going to play it. I'm going to trust my study, which as a quarterback, I think that's the one of the most challenging things to do is you have to do that. You can't just read and react. You have to anticipate a defensive reaction because it just happens so quickly. I feel like he anticipated the wrong thing and it led to an interception. For sure. But the fun thing about him at this point in his career, one for the file, stick it in there. Yeah. Next time he's going to know better because that is how Jaden Daniels operates. And you have faith that he's, he's again, not going to make the same mistake twice. Want more from Craig and Logan? Subscribe now on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. More Hoffman Show next on the Team 980 and the free Odyssey app.